Spatial sampling is an extension of probability sampling into the explicitly spatial context. In this case, sampled units may be points, lines, or areas. Examples include, for points, drill holes, where we look for resources in the earth, soil samples, and locations where we might collect climate readings. Examples of lines include traverses across a landscape. One of the researchers in our department is famous for making traverses across Arctic ice sheets and monitoring the amount of snow melt and temperature at different locations along these cross-sectional lines across the, the, the ice sheet. Based on the sample of tra traverses, statistics can be used to fill in our understanding of the ice sheet melting patterns in between where the traverses are actually t uh, sampled. There are many examples of area sampling, but some that you may be familiar with are areas of archaeological surveys or plots where we collect uh, biodiversity measures in, in forests. With point sampling, the simple random point sample procedure is to draw two n random numbers, where n is the desired number of points that we'd like to include in our sample. Based on these two n random numbers, we compose x and y coordinates uh, from pairs of these random numbers. And these xy coordinates become the locations at which we go out and sample uh, points from. So, for example, if we want to create two random locations, we need to collect, we need to randomly draw four numbers. So, suppose our four numbers that we draw are 2, 2, 5, and 1. Well, we can compose our first point by taking 2, 2 and making that a location. And we can get our second point by making a location out of the next two random numbers, 5, 1. We can then go out and sample 2, 2 and 5, 1. And that's how we can create random locations for point sampling. In systematic point sampling, we maintain regularity or evenness over the study area. In this case, we will randomly select a starting point. So, for example, we randomly selected this point as our starting point, And then we need to take samples at evenly spaced directions, at evenly spaced distances in each direction. So, based on knowledge of the size of the study area and the desired number of responses in our sample, we can calculate a distance that we need to use in order to separate our sample points in each dimension, the east-west dimension and the north-south dimension. With stratified point sampling, points are sampled in proportion or out of proportion to the surface area of the strata. This is very similar to the example that I showed you previously with stratified sampling for non-point data. In clustered point sampling, we involve two stages of randomization. First, we are going to select clusters at random, and then we are going to randomly select points within each cluster using one of the systematic, random, or stratified approaches identified previously.